Hello everybody, it's great to see you all today. Now we're learning a little bit about narrative criticism and metaphor criticism today. And you'll have two video lectures that go through the details of those types of criticism, as well as being able to, of course, read about them in detail in your book. But what I want to do is talk about another what we'll call meta issue, a part of criticism that methods do for us. And so that's what I want to talk a little bit about today, is what I'm calling thick description. So you can think about this a little bit like the difference between skim milk and whole milk. Now, most of us, um, we're used to a world where description is basically skim milk. All of the uh, thick, creamy, rich, delicious parts have been skimmed off the top, and we're left with just the fat-free, light, version of the story or the metaphor or the thing that we're describing. You can envision this if you're talking with a friend or you're talking to your parents and you are asked to describe your day and you say, it was pretty good. Uh, I passed my quiz, um, not as well as I, I would have liked, but I did all right. And um, I had pizza for lunch. That is the kind of description we're most often used to in our lives. But thick description is like whole milk. Or if like me, you grew up on a farm, you might even know about milk that actually has the cream still on it from the cow that actually has like six inches of cream at the top of a container and you have to shake it up and you get milk and almost like cream you'd put in your coffee. Mm, it is delicious and it has a lot more richness in it. Thick description is like that truly whole milk. The good creaminess of it draws you into an understanding. So go back to that idea of sharing your day. Imagine it's a time when you call your mom and you ask her, uh, or she asks you how your day is, or you call your best friend and they say, so how was your day? And you go into explicit detail about that cute person who finally, finally asked you out to coffee. Right? You tell about all the times that you and this person have been in class together and you tell your best friend or you tell your mom about how cute they are and where you were and what the weather was like and how you had on this really cute sweater and it was kind of it was kind of nice looking because you know how nice you look and you always do your hair before you come to this class and you were thinking about how smart you'd made a comment just in class and then this person pulled you aside after class and you were walking out and talking and it was so great because you talked about what a great comment you've made in class and how insightful that was and on and on and on and on and on that is thick description it gives the person who's hearing your rhetorical criticism because that's what you're doing it gives the person who's hearing your rhetorical criticism your description vivid beautiful meaningful details about everything as you understood it and so a great example of rich description or thick description comes in our textbook on page 310. That is the chapter on metaphor criticism, and it's the architectural metaphors uh, example. So I'm going to say, go ahead and take a look at that picture while we're in this lecture. Go ahead and pull it up and see the things that you observe in that picture. See the things that make it meaningful to you. Do you observe the metaphor of a toy in this building? The fun, childlike shapes, the building blockness of this, the idea of a robotic face uh, on the front of the building. All of those things are thick metaphoric descriptions. Metaphor is one of those truly wonderful things for describing something with thick, rich detail. Do you see um, the anthropomorphic quality, building as person or building as inhabiting person-like characteristics, and the beautiful thick description that this author gives us of the building, how the author draws your attention to elements of the picture that you might not even have seen, about how that face can be both intimidating and funny, about how the building can be uh, humanized or dehumanizing 
in its architectural metaphors. Do you see the third metaphor, the building as romance, right? Um, how it embraces feeling, sensuality here meaning senses and embrace of the senses, the trees that are all fragrant, the beautiful statue with its flowing lines. All of those things are rich description. So you could just say it's a really ugly building or it's a really weird building or it's a really boring building. But those don't give anybody else a picture of why you see what you see. Instead, your rhetorical criticism methods help you deeply and richly describe your text. And so what I'd like you to do is bring a text where you can deeply and richly describe some kind of narrative or metaphor that you see in that text. It can be the text that you're working with for your particular um, analysis. It can be the text that you're working with for your popular audience analysis, or it can be something entirely different. The poetry from the inauguration um, the flags on the National Mall commemorating all those we've lost to COVID-19. It can be an internet meme or a favorite way that you love to dress, but make sure that you can describe the metaphor or narrative and use these methods specifically and meaningfully to engage with thick, whole milk description in your rhetorical criticism. So that's our activity for today. Please do go ahead and watch the two video lectures on metaphor and narrative criticism. Make sure you've got a grasp on those concepts. But for class, please bring in those artifacts that you want to demonstrate how you've used thick, rich description of either the metaphors or the narratives. Thanks, everybody.